Hello, I'm Mark from GK Tutor. I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk about some finishing tips we can use when programming a finishing cycle on a CNC lathe. So before we start looking at finishing cycles, we need to look at a roughing cycle. It's all related. So this is a slide of a G71 roughing cycle. Now the first line there, we're using the U and R values, but it's the second line that we're interested in. When we come to the P and Q, what we're doing there is we're designating a subroutine. So as we go through the program, the next part of the program that we're going to write, the subroutine, we can use again when it comes to using the finishing cycle. Let me show you what I mean. So the P100, that takes us to the line N100. Now, years ago, we used to number each individual G-code line, N100, N200, N300, etc., all the way through the entire program. So the idea of P and Qs is it calls up those numbers in the program. Now, we don't tend to number each individual line of our programs anymore, but we can still use those N numbers to call upon certain parts of the program that we need. Now you can see at the beginning of this rough and turn up, I use N1. So I use this as a search function. So I could type N1 down arrow on the FANUC controls and it would search to tool one, which is my rough turn cycle. So the P100Q200 calls upon N100 and N200. So after our G71 line, we would then write our subroutine, which is our profile of our program. And then the machine works out what cuts to take from the information we give on the G71 line. So why is this important with finish turning? Well, with our finish turn cycle, the G70, we use the same method. We call upon P100, Q200 once more to repeat that subroutine. So it saves us writing that profile twice. We can just call upon it from a different part of the program, or in this case, our roughing cycle. So as our G70 reads P100, it then looks for, through the program for N100 and starts running that sequence. And it knows when to stop that sequence because when it gets to Q200, it calls upon N200, and that is the last line of our subroutine. So this way, we only need to write our subroutine once when we're writing our rough tone cycle, and then we just call upon it again with our finishing cycle, G70. So this G70 line, just simply G70 P100 Q200, will search through the program, run this subroutine that I've highlighted here, and then return back to the next line down on our main program and continue to run. Now, if that program is a subroutine, it will continue after that subroutine. So let's take a closer look at these subroutines. So here again, we have our G70 P100 Q200 and the subroutine I've written below that. Now the P100 calls upon our N100, but it doesn't have to be P100. It can be any number up to 9,999. So this gives us a lot of options for different numbers for subroutines. So we need to be careful that we're calling upon the correct subroutine at this point. So G70 P1730 would look through the program for N1730 and then start reading that subroutine from there. Now this is also the same for the last position of our subroutine. I've used Q200 here, but it could just as easily be Q760 if our N number at the end of the subroutine is N760. So altogether, that would read through the program, look for our subroutine that we pre-written in our roughing cycle, and then read through that subroutine. And then our finishing cycle is complete. So we can also add different speeds and feeds on our finishing cycle, because quite often we would need to change the speeds and feeds from the roughing cycle, and it would override any feed rates that we put within that subroutine too. So as you can see, when writing a finishing cycle, we don't need to rewrite that profile once more. And quite often in machine shops, I see this in programs. I'll be seeing a roughing cycle and then see a finishing cycle and the programmer is still using a separate portion of G-code there to rewrite that cycle. And I've even seen people copy and paste it from the roughing cycle into the finishing cycle. But of course, there's no need to do that if you understand how subroutines work. So if you want to know more about programming with G-code, I run a website that's full of courses to teach you how to do just that. And not only G-code programming courses, I also have some maths courses, 
some CAD CAM courses, and even some measuring equipment courses on there. So I'm covering all sorts of knowledge that you may need to work in a machine shop. So pop over to gcodetutor.com where I have lots of free lessons and articles and some paid courses.